Hello, uh, my name is Baskar. I represent 4G Mat. The question that we are going to look at today is an inequalities question. It's a data sufficiency question. Uh, it's an interesting question. It's a part of our Q51 series. This Q51 series is a hard math GMAT questions, right? Let's dive into the question right away. The question reads as follows. If M and N are non-zero integers, is M power N greater than N power N, right? As with any DS question, two statements follow this question. The first one is modulus of M is equal to N. And the second one is M is less than N. Uh, what I would want you to do at this stage is just don't dive into the statements immediately. That's the temptation that most of us have. Invest a little bit of time in finding out what kind of a question this is. What would be an answer to this question? When would you say that the data is sufficient to this question? Do that investment in time that will pay rich dividends. Let's do that to start with and then look at the statement subsequently. Right. Here we go. The first thing I want you to look at is when will you say the data to this question is sufficient? When will you say I have enough information to give a conclusive answer to this question? Right. This is an yes question. So you would say that the data is sufficient when you are able to answer this question with a definite yes or a definite no. Right. If I am able to come up with a definite yes, the data is sufficient. If I am able to come up with a definite no, even then the data is sufficient. When is the data not sufficient? The data is not sufficient when I am giving an answer which is the equivalent of a maybe. And I'm saying, hey, sometimes m power n is greater than n power n and sometimes it is not. Then I'm not giving a definitive answer. In that case, the data is not sufficient. The second question I want you to answer before you jump onto the statements is basically this. To this question, when will you say the data, the answer is an S and when will you say that the answer is a no? Right. Let's look at that. S is reasonably obvious. I'll answer the question with an S. If I'm able to come up with an answer saying that m power n is greater than n power n. The no is actually, it looks obvious, but watch out. There are two instances in which we'll give no as an answer. The first is pretty obvious, which is m power n is less than n power n. Definitely the answer to the question is a no. But there is one more condition to keep in mind. And that happens when m power n is equal to n power n. When m power n is equal to n power n, the question actually is what? Is m power n greater than n power n? If it is equal, obviously it is not greater. So have this clarity. When is it an S? When is it a no? In fact, I would advocate that write down when is it an S? When is it a no on your scratch paper? Because that would save you a lot of trouble when you're evaluating the statements. Right. The third question, that's the last that I want you to look at before we jump onto the statements, is what information do we have about m and n? What kind of numbers are these? The question stem provides it with all that we need. It says that these two numbers are non-zero. So neither M nor N is going to be zero. The second additional information that we have, it actually gives us a lot of uh, conclusiveness to what kind of numbers to look at, is that it says both these are integers. So you don't need to worry about decimals such as minus 3.2, 2.8 or a root 94. These are numbers you don't need to worry. What you need to bother about are basically integers. Integers could be positive. Integers could be negative. So you have to keep in mind that m and n could take values which could be minus 3 as well as could be plus 3, right? So we've got three questions answered. When is the data sufficient? When is it an S? When is it a no to this question? And what kind of numbers are m and n? Now it's time to get into the statements. Let's look at statement 1. Statement 1 says that modulus of m is equal to n. What do you mean by modulus? When we talk about modulus, we're essentially looking at the magnitude of a number. For example, mod of minus 3 will be equal to 3 mod of 3 is also equal to 3. So essentially we are looking at the magnitude of it. This question says the value of n is equal to modulus of m. When we say modulus it is always a positive number. So one thing is very clear n is a positive number and we know that it is an integer from the question stem. So n is obviously going to be a positive integer. The only thing we need to check out is what happens when m takes positive values and what happens when m takes negative values. Right. We'll start with the proposition that m takes a negative value. I'm going to go with an example. Let's plug in numbers and check out what happens. And with any of these plugging in, there are two components to keep in mind when you're plugging in numbers. But right. when you're plugging in numbers, always look for numbers which would provide you with a counterexample. When I say counterexample, you'll plug in one set of values which will satisfy the condition that modulus of m is equal to n 
which will give you an answer saying that m power n is greater than n power n and you'll plug in a second set of values which will also satisfy the condition that modulus of m is equal to n but it's going to give you an answer which says that m power n is not greater than n power n if you can find one such example one such set of examples then we can trash statement one and say that it is not sufficient but on the contrary if you plug in some numbers and you seem to be getting a uniform answer saying that either m power n is always greater than n power n for this data being true or the other way then don't jump into the conclusion that the statement is sufficient investigate a little deeper what i'm essentially trying to tell you is you cannot prove sufficiency using plugging by plugging in values you can only prove insufficiency by plugging in values to prove sufficiency if the plugged in values prove to be that it is sufficient you need to look for why it is working it could be algebra that you'll resort to it could be number properties that you might resort to it might be logical reasoning that you might resort to but you'll have to find some other way to prove that it is sufficient i'm going to look for a counter example if i can't then let's look at what happens i'm going to take m is equal to minus 3 obviously n is equal to 3 m power n is equal to minus 27 minus 3 power 3 n power n is plus 27 is m power n greater than n power n no it is not the answer is a no so i found one set of example for which m is negative and m is odd and we have found out what happened let's look at one more set of example i'm going to take m is equal to minus 2 i'm going to take n is equal to 2 let's check out what happens for this second set of value for the second set of value the answer that we're going to get is minus 2 power 2 is what m power n is which is going to make it a 4 n power n is equal to 2 power 2 which is also equal to 4 if m power n is equal to n power n then what do we have the answer is still a no because the question is is m power n greater than n power n so answer is definitely a no for it so when i took negative values for m m could be odd m could be even we got a uniform no as an answer the only thing that's left to check is basically this what happens if m is positive let's take m to be equal to 4 then n will also be equal to 4 m power n is going to be equal to n power n so in this case also our answer to the question is essentially going to be is m power n greater than m power n no is the answer to this question so by plugging in three sets of values i seem to have got a uniform no so before i jump into concluding that the given data is sufficient let's check out why this is happening the way it's happening and if we can get a conclusive proof for it then we can say that the statement is sufficient when m is negative it could either be odd or it could be even when it is odd m power n becomes less than n power n because a negative number raised to an odd power is always negative and a positive number raised to an odd power will always be positive so negative numbers are less than positive numbers so that is going to hold good when m takes an even value whether it is negative or positive n is modulus of m so the power is always even so negative number raised to an even power or a positive number raised to an even power is going to return an answer which is positive so m power n will be equal to n power n for negative values of m which are even if m is positive then obviously m and n are one and the same so it's going to be equal so though we plugged in values we have reasoned it out logically as to why it's working so we can conclude that statement one is sufficient to answer the question we'll quickly recap this what we have done statement given is modulus of n is equal to n the following cases have to be evaluated first is m is odd and it is negative in this case m power n is less than n power n the answer is no the second case is m is even and m is negative what we have is m power n is equal to n power n the answer is no the third is m is greater than zero and in this case whether it is negative whether it's odd or whether it is even m power n is always going to be equal to n power n the answer is a uniform no therefore the answer to this question is statement one is sufficient let's move on to statement two statement 2 tells us m is less than n right again here i'm going to look at plugging in answers i've done it for statement 1 what i actually want you guys to do is pause the video at this stage and look for counter examples look at cases where m is going to be less than n look for one example where m power n is greater than n power n and look for another example where it is not if you can find two such examples which satisfy the condition that m is less than n then you have it statement 2 is not sufficient if that doesn't happen then let's look at why it is sufficient and then finish this right once you are done play back the video i'll be there 
Right? I hope you have listed down the values. Now let's look at, I'm going to look for a counter example. The first one I'm going to look at is basically m is less than n, but I'll pick it in such a way that the magnitude of m is going to be greater than the magnitude of n. Right? Let's look at m to be equal to minus 4 and let me take n to be equal to 2. Right? Minus 4 power 2, m is less than n, m power n is equal to 16, n power n is 2 power 2 which is actually equal to 4. Is m power n greater than n power n? Yes. So the answer to the question right now is yes. I found one scenario where m is less than n, m is a negative number, n is a positive number and m power n is greater than n power n. Now I think I should be able to find an answer, an example which will easily satisfy the counter example scenario. Let's quickly look at that. The counter example for me is basically going to be something like this. I'm going to take m to be equal to 3 and n to be equal to 4. Pretty obvious example to go with. 3 power 4 is definitely less than 4 power 4. Is m power n greater than n power n? I've got an answer which is no. For answer with the first set of example, we got an answer yes. The second set of example, we got an answer no. We have not got a uniform answer to this question. So obviously statement 2 is not sufficient to answer the question. I'll summarize the findings of statement 2. Right. Basically I'm going to look for a counter example. And how do I go about finding that counter example? In one case the magnitude of m is more than the magnitude of n. Then there's a good possibility that m power n is going to be greater than n power n. Right. This is what we have. So this is the scenario. If I have a counter example, the counter example should be one where the magnitude of m is less than n and m is also less than n. In that case, we're going to have an answer which is going to be the contrary. So statement 2 is not sufficient to answer the question. Let's look at combining what we have. Statement 1 is sufficient. Statement 2 is not sufficient. So answer choice A is the correct answer. If you want more questions of this kind, visit our website www.q-51.com. It's a 4G mat initiative. If you like this question, share this with your friends. If you have any comments or feedback, send it to us at info at 4gmat.com.